hosted by the Clean Energy Solutions Center and the International Smart Grid Action Network, otherwise known as ISCAM. We are very fortunate to have Janusz Bilek, Matthew Prey, Remy Gerard Bertier, and Lilia Consiglio joining us today. So this great group of panelists will be discussing the Grid for EU project. And one important note of mention before we begin our presentations is that the Clean Energy Solution Center does not endorse or recommend specific products or services. Information provided in this webinar is featured in the Solution Center's resource library as one of many best practices resources reviewed and selected by technical experts. And so for the GoToWebinar panel, uh, you have two options for audio. You may either listen through your computer or over your telephone. If you choose to listen through your computer, please select the mic and speakers option in the audio pane. So doing that will eliminate any feedback and echo that you may get. And if you select the telephone option, a box on the right side will display the telephone number and audio pin that you should use to dial in. And panelists, we just want to remind you to please mute your audio device while you are not presenting. And if you have any technical difficulties with the webinar, you may contact the number that's displayed at the bottom of the slide. And that is 888-259-3826. Now we encourage, we'll have um, three question and answer sessions all together today. So we encourage you to submit your questions throughout the webinar at any point. You can do that by submitting it using the GoToPanel window where you'll find the question pane. Now, if anyone's having trouble viewing the, uh, the materials through the webinar portal, we will be posting PDF copies of the presentation at cleanenergysolutions.org forward slash training. And then you may follow along as our speakers present. And then in, in the next day or two, we will also post an audio recording of the presentations to that same page. Now we have a great agenda prepared for you today that is focused on the Grid for EU project, which lays the groundwork for the development of tomorrow's electricity grid. And before our speakers begin their presentations, I'll provide a short informative overview of the Clean Energy Solutions Center initiative. And then following the presentations, we'll have our final question and answer session some closing remarks, and then a very brief survey for the audience. Now this slide provides a bit of background in terms of how the Solution Center came to be. So the Solution Center is an initiative of the Clean Energy Ministerial, and is supported through a partnership with UN Energy. It was launched in April of 2011, and is primarily led by Australia, the U.S., and other CEM partners. So some outcomes of this unique partnership include support of developing countries through enhancement of resources and policies relating to energy access, no-cost expert policy assistance, and peer-to-peer -peer learning and training tools, such as the webinar you're all attending today. Now, the Solution Center has four primary goals. It serves as a clearinghouse of clean energy policy resources, also serves to share policy best practices, data, and analysis tools specific to clean energy policies and programs. And the Solution Center delivers dynamic services that enables expert assistance, learning, and peer-to-peer -peer sharing of experiences. And lastly, the Center fosters dialogue on emerging policy issues and innovation around the globe. So the primary audience for the Solution Center is energy policymakers and analysts from governments and technical organizations in all countries, but then we do also strive to engage with the private sector, NGOs, and civil society. Now this slide outlines uh, one of the marquee features of the Solution Center, which is the Ask an Expert service. So Ask an Expert is offered through the Solution Center. We have established a broad team of over 30 experts from around the globe who are all available to provide remote policy advice and analysis to any country at no cost. So for example, in the area of demand and policy evaluation, we're very happy to have Bruno Lapoloni, the Vice President and Co-Founder of Energata, serving as our expert. So if you have a need for policy assistance on demand and policy evaluation, or any other clean energy sector. We encourage you to use this service. Again, it is provided free of charge to the requester. So to submit your request, um, simply go to the Ask an Expert feature at cleanenergysolution.org forward slash expert, and you can submit your request there. We also invite you to spread the word about this service to those in your networks and organizations. So in summary, just encourage you to take uh, to explore and take advantage of the Solution Center resources and services, including that expert policy assistance. Subscribe to our newsletter, which will notify you about uh, other webinars you might be interested in, 
and then participate in webinars like this. And so at this point, I'd like to introduce our moderator for the webinar, who will be moderating the Q&A sessions. Um, Janos Bailek is the Dung Energy Chair of Renewable Energy at Durham University and previously held the Chair of Electrical Engineering at the University of Edinburgh. Um, so Janos, I will hand it over to you to introduce the rest of the panelists for today. Uh, thank you, Sean. Uh, so our, our first panelist is Matthew Cray, and who is a policy officer with the European Commission's Director General for Energy, uh, dealing with renewable energy and smart grid technologies. Uh, he manages energy RTD programs and follows large-scale EC-funded demonstration projects, including uh, smart transmission and distribution electricity systems, which are most important for, for this session. Uh, and the next panelist is uh, is Remy garot Bedier, who is a Smart Grid Project Manager within ERDF's Strategy and Project Development Department. And most importantly, Remy is Project Coordinator of Grid for You project. Uh, and the last panelist is Lilia Concilio, who is a Smart Grid expert within NL Distribuzione Network Technologies area. And she is the Technical Director of Grid for You project. Thank you. Great. Thank you for those introductions. And now we will hand it over to Matthew for his presentation. Um. The, the sorry the, the the presentation uh, where how can I access it? Yep. So we can see your screen right now, Matthew. You just want to pull up your slide deck. Okay. So that's okay to you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So my role as a first panelist is a bit to uh, to introduce, uh, let's say, or to, to sketch the context of EU policy on smart grids in which the, the support was given to the grid for you uh, project. And uh, in fact, all of the uh, All of the, uh, let's say, recent, uh, with recent I mean last four or five years, uh, policy actions in the energy field in the European Union, they can be best understood if we uh, take a look at the triple objectives of EU, of what we call the integrated EU climate and energy policy, which uh, was defined back in 2009. And their EU energy policy serves three goals. One is to arrive at sustainable uh, energy systems meaning uh, reducing uh, the greenhouse gas emissions stemming from energy uh, production and use, um, promoting competitiveness through uh, delivering uh, or supplying electricity at an affordable price to consumers and also to uh, uh, industry, um, also understood competitiveness as promoting a, a, a uh, let's say, uh, um, an energy technologies industry, which which is uh, uh, innovative, uh, growing, and competitive, and then finally supplying uh, or securing the supply of, of energy, both to to consumers and industry. And it is clear that smart grids, I mean, can be a very interesting uh, thing to contribute to both to those three uh, objectives. Um, smart grids can enable the integration of more distributed uh, renewable sources, uh, so contributing to sustainability. Um, it can render uh, the electricity markets more uh, competitive, can, can uh, promote the engagement of consumers, can, uh, can 
in the end uh, enable, let's say, the, the, the uh, lowering of prices of electricity. It will also contribute to the reliability of the energy uh, of the electricity uh, supply, and in this way, it contributes to energy uh, security. Um, the, uh, um, in fact, if we look at the drivers for EU policy on smart grids, um, I think we can see a bit of an in evolution over the last four or five uh, years. While in 2009-10, the uh, so-called 2020 goals were very much dominant as a driver for uh, promoting smart grids, I think we're now evolving the last two years towards more putting the uh, the accent on the possibilities for consumer empowerment that uh, smart grids uh, deliver. Um, so first, uh, smart grids were very much seen as something which is necessary in the frame of the 2020-20 targets. Those targets meant that we had to have, or that we still have to have in 2020, 20% of renewable energy in our energy mix, 20% uh, lowering of the greenhouse gas emissions compared to 1990, and 20% uh, uh, savings in energy uh, consumed compared to uh, a business as usual trajectory uh, starting in 1990. Mm -hmm. um, so as said, we are now uh, more and more uh, putting the, the, the uh, the focus on the possibilities of smart grids for consumer uh, empowerment. Uh, lots of people have have distributed uh, renewable uh, energy production in their uh, houses. Uh, uh, smart grids can uh, enable them to to master their electricity bills. Bills they can contribute in this way also to a more efficient use of energy. So that's um, the type of of uh, results that the smart grids can deliver. Uh, that we are now really very much interested uh, in. Um, there have been uh, various policy uh, and legal initiatives in which uh, smart grids have been mentioned, be it in the frame of renewables, of energy efficiency, of what we call also legislative packages for the uh, internal electricity market uh, in Europe. And uh, one of the initiatives is that the Commission, the European Commission, um, issued a communication on smart grids in 2011 in which some uh, crucial actions were um, mentioned for promoting the deployment of uh, smart grids. Mm -hmm. uh, among these are certainly the development of standards and interoperability, because we have very uh, diverse networks in, in Europe. We also want to uh, see, let's say, a market uh, uh, for, for diverse services which would be possible through smart grids, and for this, interoperability is, uh, is key. Um, guaranteeing open markets, activating consumers as well. And among the five actions, you also see stimulating innovation. And uh, that's precisely why uh, we support uh, innovative projects like uh, grid for eu now, to steer these innovation actions at the European level, we've created in 2009 the European Electricity Grid Initiative, which is a, uh, a platform in which um, many stakeholders, network operators, uh, manufacturers of electrical equipment, uh, also member states, EU member states representatives come uh, together. And one of the main uh, goals of the EEGI is to give uh, guidelines on the further programming of uh, research and demonstration actions uh, in Europe. But it's not limited to this. Uh, in the frame of the EEGI, we also want to promote knowledge sharing between projects that are funded at the national level and also between the various European projects. We uh, want to arrive at a joint assessment of the outcomes of um, of demonstration projects in, on smart grids, facilitate their upscaling, uh, their replication, um, perform a CBA, the cost-benefit assessments of the of the different technologies and the different different uh, applications that are uh, demonstrated in uh, the projects. Mm -hmm. And to this end, we we made a kind of, of uh, we made several categories of the projects with a set of objectives to is to facilitate, in fact, the exchanges between uh, the projects. One um, 
important resource to arrive at knowledge uh, exchange and one that can also be uh, interesting to the audience of this uh, webinar is uh, the inventory of smart grid projects in Europe which is done by uh, the European Commission's in-house scientific service which is the joint uh, research center so each year they uh, make an inventory of smart grid projects uh, in Europe and they, uh, they make a report with uh, lessons learned uh, out of this uh, so the 2012 uh, update which was made last year is available. They are currently uh, working on the uh, 2013 uh, update. Um, now why, so in the frame of the EGI we uh, promote exchanges between projects that are taking place in the different member states that are often also funded nationally but we also support uh, let's say large-scale demonstration projects um, really directly at the European level and grid for you is uh, one of them. The goal with this is to arrive at a large impact in a sector to create some lighthouse projects in, in Europe. They can typically count on grants uh, from the European Commission in uh, the amount of 20 to 30 million. We put industry in the lead role because they really have to be focused on uh, deployment uh, of the smart grid uh, solutions. Um, the, um, the demonstrations take place in real uh, life environments and replication exploitation should be an integrated part of such uh, demonstration projects. In, the, um, in our RTD program which ran until 2013. Two of such lighthouse projects are grid for eu and also EcoGrid eu on which I will say a few words. But first, I also want to... Uh, oh, it's already there. Um, yeah, so that's uh, EcoGrid eu and grid for eu as, as two um, lighthouse projects in the FP, what we call the FP7 uh, program. Um, grid for eu you will hear a lot about it in the two next talks. EcoGrid EU uh, is a demonstration project on a Danish island of Bornholm where there's a very high penetration of renewable energy, uh, over 50%. Uh, and what they're doing in EcoGrid EU is uh, demonstrating a real-time market uh, concept. So uh, the producers of, uh, of renewables and of distributed uh, renewables uh, energy uh, and the consumers, they will uh, receive uh, real-time price signals on which they can react and the goal is to arrive in real time or to contribute in real time to balancing supply and demand and in this way also the supply uh, flexibility services to uh, the transmission uh, level. You see in the figure how the real-time market of EcoGrid EU should complement existing uh, markets with which work on a, a different uh, time scale. This sketches a bit the, the geographical situation of the Bornholm Island as well as uh, it shows the, uh, the large-scale penetration there of w uh, wind uh, energy on the, uh, on the island. Uh, currently, um, there is a, not a funding opportunity open in the uh, RTD programs of the European Commission. The new program from this year on is called Horizon uh, 2020. And for the participants here in the webinar, I've put there the web address where they can um, get more information on how they can participate and what exactly uh, is funded under Horizon 2020. Um, I only want to mention that currently there is a uh, call topic open also on distribution uh, grids. Uh, finally, I want to say uh, some words uh, about the EC contribution, the European Commission's contribution to the ISGAN uh, network. Um, as uh, the presenters of grid for eu will uh, explain, there is an important contribution of the European Commission to Annex 2, which is the case studies uh, annex of, uh, of uh, ISGAN, and grid for eu uh, coordinates there the uh, production of a global casebook on active demand management. Uh, which will uh, be ready for the next clean energy ministerial in May uh, this year. We uh, have managed to have a, a good uh, 
uh, representation of different parts of the world in that active demand management casebook hmm, from uh, Asia, India, Japan, from uh, America, US, uh, Canada, uh, also from South Africa and then several European uh, cases. Um, the, uh, those who would be interested to get more information also on, on EcoGrid EU, it will be one of the cases that is described also in that uh, casebook. Furthermore, we are contributing to Annex 1 and 3 through the activities of the Joint Research Center of the European Commission based on their inventory activities and on uh, work they are doing in cost-benefit uh, methodologies. And then we're also uh, launching now a, an active contribution to Annex 5, which is the, uh, the network of research facilities on uh, smart grids. And they're a European network of smart grid labs. Their lab is uh, going to be the, uh, the operating uh, agent. Um, I will leave it to this. Um, I can answer some questions, and I'm looking forward to, to get the detailed information on the grid for you project in the next presentations. Okay, thank you. So this is Janusz again, um, moderating Q and A session. So I don't see any, I don't see any uh, uh, questions appearing on my box. So may I just uh, ask question? Comparing Horizon 2020 to to FP7 framework, uh, is the levels of support higher or or the same for the for the smart grids activities? Well, the um, the support that uh, the European Commission gives to uh, to smart grid uh, projects will increase significantly in Horizon 2020. Overall, in the in the research program, energy the energy sector already gets uh, a much higher amount of, of grants. But this is also particularly the case for grids and storage. Hmm? Uh, for electricity grids and storage, we will have. Um, about 100 million euro in grants that will be uh, given each year to several projects. Uh, this compares to more or less 45 to 50 million we had each year in, in FP7. So there's uh, a doubling of the, uh, of the funding available for uh, smart grid projects in, in the coming years. Thank you very much. Um, well, I think it's of less interest on the, on our, our American participants, but we in Europe are salivating, of course, right? seeing such a large sums of money. I do not see any other questions, so I pass over back to Sean to, for, for the rest of the session. Yeah, thank you, Janus. Um, and we, I just want to remind the audience, if they do have any questions, they can submit those through the question pane in the GoToWebinar window. Um, and with that, we will actually move on to uh, Remy's presentation. Um, so. Yes. So I hope you can see my screen. And uh, first, first of all, I'm, I'm glad to be uh, with you today for this uh, ISGAN uh, webinar. I will start with some uh, background on the grid for you uh, project. And uh, this is the agenda for the, the coming presentation. So back in uh, 2009, the European Commission issued a call for proposal for its main funding research body in order to set up a large scale demonstration of distribution network with distributed generation and active customer participation. And as a result of ERDF initiative, and for the first time, six major European distribution system operators, VSOs, made the important decision to pull their expertise in response to that European ambition. Thus, Chess distribution in the Czech Republic, NL in Italy, Iberdrola in Spain, RVE in Germany, Vattenfall in Sweden, and ERDF in France came together to propose a common solution to the European uh, Union. This is how grid 4 u was born and uh, at this time becoming one of the largest smart grid projects ever funded by the European Commission. With a total budget of 50 4 million euros, roughly 70 million US dollar, and for a uh, um, 51 month period, uh, this project is financed up to 50% by the European Commission. As you can see on that map, 
The project consists of six different demonstrators set up under real operating conditions in six different countries. So there is a demo in Sweden managed by Vattenfall. There is a demo in Germany managed by RVE. There is a demo in Spain managed by Iberdrola. One in Italy managed by NL and one in the Czech Republic managed by Chess Distribution and of course one in France managed by EADF. Grid for Youth objectives is to showcase current smart grid technologies and techniques to Europe and to the world by the end of the 50 months, uh, 51 months project. Of course, to ensure the success of grid for you this collaboration of leader DSOs also needed to benefit from uh, other expertise coming from different partners such as universities, equipment manufacturers, research center. But as you can see on that map, we are gathering, in addition to the TSOs, 70, uh, 27 partners and more than 25 uh, sub-parties. So we are 60 in the grid for You consortium work collaborating together at a European level. And trust me, as coordinator, this is a, a, a huge consortium and a lot of work to make everybody working together. I have mentioned before the objectives of the project. And now I would like to go further into details. The project objectives are multiple. And they can be divided in two categories. We have objectives of research or implementation of innovative technologies. And we have objectives regarding business and societal goals. In terms of what the demonstrators will actually be testing, you have here a sample of the innovative technologies of our topics addressed. In the grid for you and in the six demos, with six demos, sorry, we are dealing with active demand. We are dealing with renewable integration into the, the medium voltage and the low voltage grid. We are also trying to secure energy supply and to improve network reliability. We will try to set up new automation on medium voltage and low voltage network. We will try our best to improve peak load management thanks to customer uh, engagement. We will deal with storage. We will try to work on an, uh, under islanded operation and we will deal with electric vehicles. In terms of business and societal goals, considering the huge investments required to set up a smart grid infrastructure project, we, as the grid for You consortium, felt that bringing together multiple DSOs and different partners would allow and speed up the sharing of the results among them and us and ease the assessment of replication and scalability potential at the European level, as well as the cost-benefits analysis. It is very, very important for, for us to know if those te the technology tested in real condition are the, what are the, the, the scalability and replicability, replicability potential of those technology. With regard to the objectives, I have uh, mentioned previously, and in order to keep consistency and ease or knowledge sharing, we have gathered our ambitions and objectives in six work streams. So we have one work stream for the active demand, another one for renewable integration, one regarding medium voltage automation, one dedicated to islanded operation, one dedicated to the storage, and one for LV automation. As you can see here on that map, each demo is testing several streams. So the demo in the Czech Republic, managed by Czech Distribution, is dealing with LV and MV automation, including electric vehicle management. The German demo, managed by LVE, will improve the, the surveillance and control of the medium voltage grid. Vattenfall in Sweden will use the AMI infrastructure to better control and monitor 
the low voltage bit. Hyperbola in Spain will involve customers in medium voltage and low voltage uh, network automation in control. And then in Italy will deal with uh, integ renewable integration in the medium voltage network. And ERDF in France will manage the integration of solar panel production generation on the low voltage grid. And we will also try to involve the customers in uh, some active demand and flexibility uh, program. Later in the presentation, my colleague Lilia from NL will give you more details on each, uh, on each demo. All the six demonstrators will test this solution at a large scale and within different boundary conditions. Thus, we will avoid, uh, and we avoid, effort overlapping. For example, uh, islanding will be tested in two different demonstrators with two different approach. The French demo will deal with islanded operation with a lithium-ion storage and PV generation. In the meantime, Chess in the Czech Republic will test islanded operation with a CHP unit connected to the island grid. In the same way, active demand will be tested in three demonstrators with several innovative approaches and technologies. The French demo will mainly with mainly LV low voltage customers, residential and industrial, and with the help of aggregators. In the meantime, the Italian demo will deal with active demand with large industrial customers connected to the medium voltage grid. And the Spanish demo with in-home display for LV residential customers. So same topic, active demand, but several boundary condition, different boundary condition and several innovative approaches and technologies. Again, the project management and to, to help deliver the objectives I mentioned earlier and to showcase current smart grid technologies and technique, the project also includes common general work package. These teams coordinate the project, define standards for the tested technologies, assess scalability and replicability potential for these new technologies, and last but not least, identify business cases for smart grid through cost-benefit analysis. So this, as you on the screen, you have the, the, the backbone of the grid for you uh, project management, grid for you organization in order to, to, to deliver or, or best and to reach our, our objectives. But more than technologies in themselves, the innovation brought by grid for you lies in the fact that all the partners will work together and all the results may be confronted and feed common work packages like scalability and replication uh, assessment for this technology. All in all, all partners will mutually benefit from all demonstrators' results. This is really the beauty of, uh, of grid for you As you can see, we are underway in the third year of the project. So what has been achieved so far? I'm proud to say that each of the six grid for you demonstrators has completed year one and year two objectives, which included definition of the use cases, key performance indicators, and detailed specifications. So, so far, 33 deliverables from which 21 are public have been submitted to the European Commission, paving the way for technical implementation of the demonstrators. Now, test networks have already started. And once validated, these new technologies will be deployed in the Czech Republic, in France, in Germany, in Italy, in Spain, and in Sweden. If you have any question regarding this uh, overview, I will be uh, glad to answer some of them. <coughs> okay, thank you very much, Remy. This is Janos again moderating the question and answer session. 
Uh, so far, I have one question I think from, from the in this session, which is, what are the major challenges you face in this project? As, as good for you, coordinator, the main uh, challenge for, for, for me is to ensure that the 60 of us, the 60 partners in the Grid for You project are working together and will work together. We need to keep this, uh, this uh, team spirit in the Grid for You project to deliver uh, the, the results and to ensure the, 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 sh the knowledge sharing and, uh, and to foster synergies. So this is clearly uh, my main challenge as coordinator. Uh, thank you. And there's also a general question for, uh, from the morning session, because we had this morning European time another session, and uh, it's about the languages. In which languages will the material, it means info or the brochures, be available? Will it be only in English or other languages? The, the, the official language of the Good for You project is English. That's all the deliverables are in English, and even with uh, my bad accent, I try my best to, to keep this, this rule uh, real. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think that all the general questions, oh no, sorry, there's just another question up here, which, uh, uh, will the, de the deliverables be published? Oh, uh, I will come back to that point a bit later, but what I can say right now is that if you visit the grid 4 eu website, you can download the 21 public deliverables in English, as I said, but they are all available in the grid 4 eu website. Okay, thank you. And just another question has appeared also. Uh, how will the pilots inform future implementation? I'm not sure, is it future implementation smartness in general or this particular project? So you will uh, have some more detail in, in Lilia presentation, but so, so far we are starting the, um, the real work on the field. So after a bit more than more, nearly two years dedicated to the definition of the, the specification of the key performance indicators of the use cases, now we are testing on the field real material on, 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 on a real context with real customers. In nearly all the six demos are at that stage. Uh, okay, thank you. I don't see any more questions appearing. Once again, a reminder to everyone uh, listening to this webinar that you can type in the questions and they will appear in my box and I will, uh, I will read them. Thank you and over to Sean. Great, thank you. And we'll, we'll just go straight on to uh, Lilia for the last uh, part of the presentations today. Okay. Hi to everybody. And uh, now we'll have a, a Zoom on the six demos activities all over Europe. So starting from the information that uh, Romy already gave you, I will try to, do, uh, to give you uh, an idea about uh, the content, the main objectives and uh, the uh, issue that each of uh, the six demos are facing up to now. The first demo is the, the German one, and uh, it is managed by RWE, that is the uh, distribution system operator in that area. And uh, it is located in the area of Reichen in uh, North Rhine-Westphalia in Germany. And uh, the main goal is uh, to demonstrate that uh, in a European medium voltage network can uh, uh, use uh, a new concept, uh, a concept uh, that deals with uh, self-organizing nodes that automatically and autonomously uh, serve the need of the DSO and of the customers, improving quality of services and helping the distribution system operator to, for instance, uh, recover fault and uh, to uh, uh, achieve higher reliability over the network. The other partners involved in this demo are ABB and uh, the Technology uh, University of Dortmund, TU uh, University. 
and uh, uh, they are developing a new multi-agent system, uh, adopting uh, these uh, uh, multi-agent uh, technologies over industrial solution for network operation. They are trying to integrate an increasing, incredible increasing number of decentralized energy resources in the medium and in the low voltage networks. And uh, the goal is also uh, to avoid overloads, uh, overflow over the network. And uh, there is also another goal that is the uh, increase of uh, monitoring and surveillance of re and remote control in that area over the medium voltage network. So let's go to the second demo, the Swedish one that uh, is managed by Vattenfall, the distribution system operator uh, in Sweden. And uh, the demo is located in uh, Uppsala, in the city of Uppsala. The other partners involved are ABB, Emitter, KTH, and Telvent. This demo has the uh, goal to validate that uh, uh, a, a, an existing infrastructure, the smart metering infrastructure, can be uh, used to uh, control also uh, the low voltage distribution network, uh, adopting new solution and a new way to use the data coming from the smart meter, increasing also customer power quality. So the control of the low voltage distribution networks uh, uh, will be done through the automatic meter uh, manager uh, system. And thanks to new intelligent equipment that are uh, being installed in the low voltage network, and this infrastructure and this equipment will allow for a more distributed generation uh, hosting and also will improve customer power quality. So they will show us how we can monitor and control the low voltage network, also enabling active demand and uh, all distributed generation hosting capacity increase. The third demo, let's go to the next slide, please, is the Spanish one. The DSO in that area is Iberdrola, and the other part of the current, Iton, Landis and Gear, Ormazabal, Siemens, and ZIV. The demo is located in the area in Spain. And the main goal is uh, the, to enhance uh, the observability and the control of the low voltage and of the medium voltage network thanks uh, to uh, a new solution based also in that case in, on smart metering infrastructure. That means that uh, uh, thanks to the usage of uh, uh, new installed intelligent meters, uh, we will be able to gather information that will help us to have a, a better knowledge of the network status so as to uh, have an immediate idea about outages and uh, uh, several information coming from the network such as uh, voltage, current uh, value and power quality information and so on. In this, in this way, uh, we will be able to monitor the low voltage uh, network and uh, at substation level to evaluate also overloads, imbalances, and so on. And also uh, new solution to evaluate losses, uh, both technical and non not technical, will be uh, put in place. Uh, for instance, comparing uh, the total amount of uh, energy uh, and, mm, at substation level, at the formal level, with the power, prof the curve profile coming from the uh, smart meters. There will be also uh, a customer engagement, uh, a, a huge customer engagement, thanks to uh, new displays that they will be, uh, they will have in their home, uh, in order to get a new information of their consumption and to inform them about, for instance, the status of the network, uh, for instance, so work over the network or fault and so on. 
The fourth demo is uh, the Italian one. And the distribution system operator in this area is Enel Distribuzione. And the other partners involved are Cisco, Celta, Siemens, and RSE. The demo is located in uh, a rural area around the city of Forlì Cesena in the region Emilia Romagna. And the goal is uh, to increase the medium voltage hosting capacity uh, to uh, deal with distributed energy resources increasing over the medium voltage network. So as to introducing, uh, introducing uh, active control of that uh, uh, distribution and uh, distributed energy resources and also uh, controllable, controllable loads and uh, storage systems located along the medium voltage network. The main goals are the implementation of a new active control systems that uh, will increase medium voltage network hosting capacity of, of renewable generation and uh, to help the medium voltage distribution network to become more flexible with the new and advanced network operation and uh, uh, energy management capabilities. Demonstrating also how this uh, uh, solution can work under real operating condition and on large scale, uh, thanks also to the adoption of these uh, storage systems uh, uh, on the medium voltage network. The fifth demo is the Czech one. The Czech one in Czech Republic. Uh, the DSO is the Czech distribution, and uh, the other partners involved are ABB, Cisco, Current, and Siemens. And the city uh, in which the demonstration is located is uh, Rock Labi in Czech Republic. And the goal of this demo is to demonstrate uh, uh, that also an existing distribution networks, uh, thanks to smart meter and uh, to some upgrade of existing or new uh, um, CHP unit can be uh, used to allow, for instance, automatic high landing condition and uh, how also smart meter uh, deployment can help uh, the customer to have uh, better information from about the network. A new uh, CHP unit uh, uh, has been installed and uh, uh, there will be automatic running of uh, uh, Island of uh, a portion of the medium voltage network, supplying uh, a small area uh, in that city. There will be put in place also new uh, automation over existing medium voltage and low voltage network. Last but not least, the sixth demo is the French one, and the distribution system operator in that area is ERDF. And uh, the demo is located in the area of Nice, uh, in Carros, near Nice, in France. And that's why also this project, this demo, uh, is uh, well known as a Nice Grid or Nice Grid project. The other partners involved in the demo are Aston Grid, Armins, and EDF. The goal of this uh, demo is uh, to test uh, a smart grid pilot in order to validate a uh, new solution to integrate distributed energy resources and the usage of electricity storage. So this is a, a district in which there is a high level of solar generation and uh, this generator, the electricity storages and uh, the loads will be used to test different situations so uh, optimizing the medium voltage, low voltage network and studying uh, island in capability of that network. There is also a huge involvement of customer, and one of the goals is to study how customers can become more active and if they can adapt their consumption or their generation, uh, face helping the distribution system operator to face uh, uh, constraints, problem, and uh, especially at peak hours. And there will be also uh, an assessment in terms of cost and benefit of this smart district 
taking into account the different players involved. This is uh, just uh, uh, an idea uh, about the six demos and uh, you can find uh, uh, a lot of information about them uh, in our website and I'm sure that uh, uh, you will find that uh, there are a lot of interesting information. So uh, come to uh, other activities that we are uh, work, uh, we are dealing with in this project. We are six demo, but we are a unique project. That's why we need common work packages, as Rumi already told us, to build a common framework all over the six demo. That's why we spent the first year of the project, the very first year of the project, uh, collecting the main use cases uh, that uh, all the six demo uh, are developing. So uh, we collected these use cases uh, in a, a sort of book and uh, uh, we tried to find also commonalities and to stress differences between these different uh, use cases. From these use cases we also extract some uh, specific uh, KPI. Common key performance indicators are been, have been defined, uh, trying to find a way to measure uh, the results coming from different uh, uh, demonstrators. And uh, uh, all these work, use case, both use cases and uh, uh, KPI collection, as using a common methodology. Uh, for instance, uh, adopting uh, a smart grid architecture model in languages uh, UML to uh, describe the use cases and uh, also to put in place the rules done by uh, Grid Plus and the EGI initiative uh, uh, within the scope of Grid Plus. A global uh, technical coordination, overall technical coordination is also uh, needed to maximize the value uh, that uh, we can have being a, a project, a unique project. So we want to maximize the value for, for the uh, European uh, community uh, from our uh, joint uh, efforts. So we want to be also proactive in identifying all the barriers that uh, uh, we are facing to uh, demonstrate our solution and to propose also common way to solve, to address these barriers. And there is also an important way to work, uh, that is the uh, peer review process between the demonstrators. That means that we try uh, to foster knowledge sharing and common work between the six demo. For instance, uh, putting in place the peer review process of all the deliverables coming from the six different demo. In that way, we are sure that there is a, 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 co a, a strict knowledge sharing about the six demo. Going to the next slide, please. There are all... in our work that uh, are... for I'm, Okay, uh, we are trying to uh, adopt uh, a unique methodology uh, to describe, for instance, the use case, to describe, for instance, the KPI, and as uh, uh, I told you, uh, we try to adopt the mandate of the European Commission, mandate 419, uh, to describe all the use cases with the common and shared methodology. Uh, modeling all the demonstrators within uh, the uh, SGAM architecture, the Smart Grid architecture model that has been provided by the working group uh, uh, reference architecture in the SGAM, in the, um, from the European Commission. And in this way, all the six demo have been modeled and have been described. And uh, thanks to these uh, common KPIs, uh, in common description and uh, uh, rules, 
should be, it should be possible to uh, address the scalability and the replicability uh, analysis that, uh, uh, and the cost-benefit analysis. So the replicability means uh, how a system, a network or a process can be duplicated in another location on, or in another time. I mean, scalability means uh, how a system, a network or a process can be increased in terms of size, scope or range in order to meet uh, a growth in demand. And uh, uh, the cost-benefit analysis uh, will address uh, the cost and benefit uh, dealing with uh, a demo a solution uh, a project. These three uh, important uh, topics uh, are being addressed also with the common methodology coming, for instance, from the JSC methodology uh, with respect to cost-benefit analysis. And uh, uh, all in all these cases, we do for you uh, project with a report to the European Commission all the difficulties encountered while implementing uh, uh, these guidelines uh, uh, into real projects, into real demos. And it should be an added value. And uh, this uh, uh, return on experience uh, will be done also to give feedback and lesson learned to standard standardization bodies. Uh, because one uh, uh, another goal of a grid for you project is uh, to address uh, the uh, adoption of the standard uh, to define uh, a sort of uh, um, catalogs of standard for the different demonstrators so as to validate and share experience uh, in the implementation of that standards and the feedback and lesson learned about these uh, topics uh, have been uh, also circulated uh, among the uh, community in Europe uh, in particular also in this case, taking into account the mandate 490. And this is also, this is uh, one of the uh, important common work that we are doing together in uh, these uh, years, in these two first years. And uh, we will do our best also to address these topics this, uh, in terms of uh, interoperability and standard compliance in the next uh, uh, two years. I think that I can leave the floor to Rumi for the last information about the project, such as the dissemination activities. Rumi, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lilia. To, to ensure project outcomes are disseminated as widely as possible, we, for your project, we are involved in several uh, initiative like for instance the the ESGAN one. So which for you was very active in the first ESGAN casebook regarding uh, smart meter uh, infrastructure in uh, it was at the beginning of last year. And currently we are deeply involved in the second casebook regarding uh, active demand. Deeply involved because we are coordinating this second case book about active demand and we are contributing as we have provided a, a case for this case book. This is the good for you French demo. So the next step is that we will finalize the, case, the current case book about active demand before the end of uh, February and because we would like to, to publish the case book before the end of, of, of March. So as mentioned by Mathieu previously, we have gathered some, something like 13 different uh, cases ex about active demand around the world. So this casebook will be, I hope, the reference regarding active demand experimentation around the world. We are also involved in uh, other initiatives, as mentioned uh, as well by Mathieu, the EGI one, and Grid for You project has been labeled as an EGI core project. It means that all the grid for you objectives are perfectly consistent with the EGI roadmap. We are also working very closely with the EcoGrid EU project. 
it means that we are sharing information and, and progress between us. And as a grid for your coordinator, I have the chance to be part of the EcoGrid EU advisory board and the coordinator of grid for you of the EcoGrid EU project is also a member of grid for you advisory board. So we are really sharing a lot on a on on a, not on a daily basis, but several times per year or even per month, we are talking together to ensure that we are really working together. The grid for you advisory board is a very important body in the project. The last one was at the beginning of December last year in Stockholm, hosted by Vattenfall. It's a unique chance for us in the project to have feedback from the outside. So last time we have gathered in Stockholm 36 members from 10 different countries. And we really have very positive feedback and interesting information from the, uh, the advisor. So grid for you is working on its own demos with inside the consortium, but also it's, very, it's a, a project open to the rest of the world with the, uh, some the different initiatives, thanks to different initiatives like uh, EGI and uh, advisory board. And uh, we have good friends, let's say, at the, in the EcoGrid EU uh, project. So if there is any questions regarding uh, uh, okay. discrimination or, or the Lydia presentation. Okay, thank you. So this is Siano speaking again, moderating the session. Uh, so I, I have with a number of questions uh, which uh, uh, have appeared. Uh, well, there's, uh, there are three questions which regard to uh, replicating the, the, the project uh, results. Is it possible to replicate the project results to other components? Uh, not only in developed countries but also in developing countries. So, uh, in, so the questions are, what are the smart grid opportunities for Africa? How can this be extended to developing nations? What can uh, grid for you projects do to assist a similar, a similar program for Africa? I, I can start and, and Lilia, please feel free to, to complete my, uh, my answer. I'm, I'm quite sure that what we are doing regarding islanded operation, for example, in the French demo, with only uh, solar generation. So this, let's say that this little uh, part of France is, we try to, to perfectly balance the solar generation and the local consumption. So this island is probably one of the best solution to provide electricity uh, to Africa when there is no national grid or, or, or very uh, efficient network. So we are testing the solution in France, and we are testing in this solution in, in the Czech Republic, for example. And I think that it could be a real opportunity to duplicate or to replicate that in Africa. Just to ensure the perfect balance between local solar generation and local consumption. And of course, when there is a lack of grid, the storage could be an option to provide electricity 24 hours per day. That's also why we are testing, for example, in Italy, and Lilia will probably give us more detail, we are testing some storage solution as well as in France. So solar panel, islanded operation, and storage could be in my mind, a good opportunity to provide electricity 24 hours per day in some part of Africa. Just to add uh, a few uh, ideas, or, or all of the results coming from the sixth demo uh, will be published in some way uh, thanks to the deliverable thanks to the material posted on uh, the website. And I'm sure that there is a really a lot of information in that deliverable in those uh, uh, documents that uh, uh, can help uh, uh, the people who deal with uh, similar problems all over the world, not just in Africa. And for sure, uh, we uh, are uh, addressing uh, several problems uh, also in different uh, uh, 
contexts, in different conditions, facing different barriers. Uh, so I, sh I think that uh, uh, our uh, goal is also to share this information uh, with the community. And so think, I think that this could be the help that our project can really bring to the uh, community uh, of smart grid people all over the world, not just in Africa. Perhaps I'm a bit proud, but uh, it could be uh, a small piece, but an important piece of contribution. OK, thank you. And now we have a number of more specific questions. Uh, the first question is about HVDC technology. How is the grid for you hoping to achieve self-healing on HVDC? Uh, basically, do you do at all with HVDC in this particular project? Uh, no, uh, we are not addressing these topics in the sixth demo, and so these solutions are all, all out of the uh, goal of the context of the grid for you demos. I'm sorry for that, but uh, this is yeah. the reality. It's okay, yes. Uh, now, a, a long question, more technical question regarding demo one. Uh, does DEMO1 simply devolve traditional centralized control to localized systems, to localized systems, or is it also using new network management techniques such as dynamic rating of license transformers, controlling renewable generation output, balancing power flows using quadrature boosters, or similar? Uh, okay, uh, the, uh, this demo is trying to uh, adopt uh, a new uh, self-healing concept uh, uh, on the medium voltage network. This multi-agent system will uh, uh, do their best to uh, re-adapt the uh, status of the network, changing, for instance, uh, uh, the topology of the network, uh, so as to uh, both uh, manage the fault uh, over the network, but also trying to optimize the, as the usage of the asset. This is the goal of this uh, uh, work in uh, the demo one. So uh, there are no control over renewable generator, no uh, uh, dynamic rating of the lines or of the transformers, but there is the balancing of power flows uh, on the network. This is one of the goals of the network for sure, of the project for sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, another technical question about what do you mean by HV network uh, in different countries that different voltage levels. So does HV stand for voltage is more? than 66 kV or that also include a medium voltage level? All the demo in the grid for you uh, are focused on both low voltage network, that in Europe means uh, 400 uh, voltage, or in medium voltage network, that means different voltage uh, uh, all over the uh, Europe, but for sure not the HV or AB network uh, as mentioned. Uh, so uh, in that, in some country uh, we are under 60 kilovolt. In some country we are under 30 kilovolt. In some other under 15 kilovolt. It depends on the different countries involved in the uh, project. Uh, thank you. Well, the next question is more philosophical one, more general one. Uh, it is regarding possible preliminary, preliminary results when a network has been already reinforced in order to avoid congestion and voltage problems. It means uh, business as usual solutions have already been adopted. Do smart grids have sense? In that particular case, Smart grid cannot avoid the, the copper investment as they are already there. Smart grid could be a good solution to add some uh, flexibility on the grid and to manage active demand. So, just to postpone or to avoid uh, investment on the grid, it's probably not the best option. But if you want to work on different smart topic like active demand and to manage flexibility or customer engagement better. Smart grid could be a good solution, even if 
you don't need to, to deal with the congestion on the grid. Okay, thank you. And the next question is, uh, is any of the demos dealing with services from distributed generation, for example, voltage control? I suppose the answer is yes, but I'll give it over to you to, re to, to reply in detail. Yes, for sure, for instance, in the for demo 4, the Italian demo, the uh, medium voltage uh, distributed energy resources will be involved to uh, help uh, the uh, control of the voltage along the medium voltage feeder, uh, providing, uh, for instance, reactive power in uh, uh, some conditions uh, in the network. So, for sure, yes, they are involved in the project, and this is one of the uh, uh, main uh, goal of the Italian demo. Uh, okay, thank you very much. And now, uh, maybe I'll repeat a couple of general questions, interesting general questions, which were asked in, in the morning session and which might be of interest for, for this session. Uh, what are the challenges that you have met in customer recruitment and uh, demand response? Regarding customer uh, I can explain a bit what happened in the French demo. We were surprised to, to see that it was easier to involve industrial customers connected to, the, to, to our network than the residential customers. It seems that people are more aware of the cost of smart pollution than the residential customers. It was very tough to, to involve residential customers in, in the demo and far more easier to work with the industrial one. Okay, thank you. And another general question, this is to Lilia as the technical director. What are the main risks you perceive in grid for you? Uh, the main risk would be the a poor uh, exchange of information between the partners uh, so as to uh, duplicate the effort to uh, reach our goal. So uh, the main, uh, uh, this could be one of the main uh, issues, uh, the main problem in the project. That's why we are trying to adopt common way to work, common methodologies, and to foster the knowledge sharing in the project from the beginning. I think that we start uh, as a sixth demo, really, but now we are a sort of group, a sort of really a project in which uh, information comes and flows from one demo to another and this is uh, our main uh, risk and we try to uh, prevent deviation from the road we uh, are trying to uh, uh, to build to to go through okay thank you and the next more technical question could you tell us some of the results about reactive power needs in order to get distributed generation involved in voltage control? Uh, I cannot give you a real result because we are just a result coming from the previous simulation uh, done at laboratory test level and uh, we have to face also with the reality. Uh, the reality means that in the real field, uh, for instance in the Italian demo, we are trying to uh, have on board these uh, uh, DR owners, uh, asking them cooperation and collaboration, but uh, this collaboration and cooperation is uh, totally uh, free and totally uh, uh, so on volunteer basis. So uh, we have also problem with respect to uh, um, guarantee that uh, uh, these uh, power plants will produce at maximum level in terms of uh, active power and uh, we'll, we cannot ask them to reduce active power because we need the reactive uh, to, uh, power to uh, control the voltage. That's why we will uh, have a really a short amount of reactive power coming from these uh, 
power plants in the real field. So for the amount, I think that we will have to wait for the result coming from the field, but it is something not really so uh, huge. We can say about some uh, hundreds of kilowatts. Uh, kilo kilo okay, thank you. Uh, and, and three new questions have appeared. Uh, the first one is about KP KPIs, uh, key performance indicators. What are the main difficulties have you found when you have defined common key APIs? Have you managed to avoid loss of information? Uh, okay, the uh, main problems uh, uh, comes from the beginning. Uh, that is uh, uh, how uh, common KPI are calculated in the different demo. So uh, we uh, try to clearly state uh, how these KPI uh, uh, will be calculated, evaluated, and uh, for sure we had some problem, we are having some problem uh, in terms of uh, poor information, poor exchange of information, uh, critical information, we can say, uh, from the demo. That's why, for instance, uh, we, why we decide to evaluate some of these KPI inside the demo perimeter and not at uh, uh, project level, because uh, some of the demo uh, prefer to maintain the, uh, the data uh, inside the demo uh, uh, itself. So we are trying also to uh, manage the loss of information, for instance, uh, uh, creating a clearinghouse on which we publish uh, on a, a periodic way uh, these uh, KPI. And now we are in the first stage in which we are populating this clearinghouse with the baseline value uh, so as to compare the uh, evolution, uh, the value in the evolution of the project. Uh, thank you. The next important, this, this important question always causes some problems with smart grid demonstration projects about regulatory issues. So is the project dealing with regulatory issues? At the very beginning, in some countries involved in the grid for you project, we had to convince the regulator that we need more, uh, let's say, more freedom to uh, to set up the, the demos. For example, in France, we are uh, dealing using some batteries connected to the to the to the grid, and in the current regulatory French regulatory framework, it's forbidden to have uh, batteries connected to the to the grid. So we ask the regulator to allow us to connect some batteries in order to test and to better understand how batteries could help us as a utility, as a DSO, to, to better manage uh, renewables. So, and one of the, the goals of grid for you is to provide some feedback to the, uh, kind of advices, to the, to the regulators. So we, on a regular basis, we are presenting our results and our progress to uh, regulator uh, bodies in order to make them aware of the, how, how smart solution could help us to, to improve the efficiency of uh, our grid. Uh, okay, thank you. Now the next question is about the utility business model. If the, the, the project and the results of the projects do uh, do affect utility business models. You are utilities after all. So the question is: Does Grid for You have a strong focus on the impact on the impact of the demos if adopted at a scale on a utility business model? This is part of the uh, replicability and scalability uh, assessment. Of course, if we want to scale up a smart solution and test it in one of the demo, and if this uh, so new solution will prob will change deeply the, the the utility business model, we need to know that because it could 
really have some deep impact on uh, on our business model. So we are uh, trying to assess what could be the changes in our business model if we decide to deploy uh, on a large scale the, the smart solution. For example, uh, micro, my, my, microgrid and islanded operation. That's that's a bit. Could, it could be a bit on large scale. It could be a bit tricky for a, a utility. That's why we need really to de completely understand what is behind this kind of solution. And if we want to deploy you know, microgrid everywhere, we really need to check where are uh, the, the, the changes in uh, in the current uh, utility business model. So, Lilia, feel free to to add uh, some uh, some points. Okay, thank you. The next question. No, no, really? Okay. Yes. Okay, Lydia, you want to say something? No, no, please. Okay. Uh, so the next question is: I'm not sure if I understand it correctly. With more than 1,000 panel of 300 watt each, how the off-grid will be suggested? I think how the off-grid operation will be suggested. Probably that that's what the question means. So with many panels of 300, uh, with thousands of panels of 300 watt each, how the off-grid operation will be or can be suggested? I'm not sure the, I uh, understood clearly the question. Yeah, I think, uh, I'm afraid that uh, well, I was trying to interpret it. But maybe the author sends it uh, again, and in the meantime, uh, the next question is, uh, well, it also refers to the same topic, which is, shall we subdivide it, it means this output of the panels, to get output to battery and converter? It means, well, again, I'm not sure exactly what the question is about. Could the author please uh, specify exactly? I would take it that probably with, with so many, with output from the panels, uh, can, they, can the output be divided by, to, that some part of it, it goes to the battery and some to the converter? This could be a, a question related to the function functionality, the function, the way a, a storage system could function, uh, could work. I, I'm not sure the the real content of this uh, uh, this question. So I'm sorry, really sorry, if uh, the people who send this uh, question could try to better explain uh, the real meaning of this uh, question, we can try to, to answer. Yes, yeah, I, I have the same problem trying to understand. I mean, at the moment, these are all the questions which I have received uh, from this session, and I ask also some questions from the morning session. So, unless there are no other questions, uh, then I will pass uh, the button. No, there is one more question. How are you integrating renewable energy sources? Well, this is quite a general question. We are trying to engage them, uh, letting them participate uh, to the uh, op operation of the network. So, for instance, asking them uh, for reactive power, as we said. And this is just a proof of concept for sure, but uh, this is the first step for new ancillary services that could be brought in the market, in new probable, probable market uh, in the future. Uh, yes, okay, thank you. Uh, yes, I don't have, again, I don't have clarifications of the previous questions, so I don't have anything else at the moment, so in this case I'll just pass back to Sean again to conclude the session, please. Yes, thank you um, to Janus and each of the panelists for the presentations and the, the question and answer session. Um, if we re receive a clarification of that question, then I can definitely forward it um, along through email. Um, we did just receive another question. Um, if, if the panelists said to just uh, keep your response brief as we are running out of time, I'll, I'll read this question out so that you can address it. And the question is, if 
GSOs are responsible of quali for quality of service regarding interruptions and during islanded operation. Uh, generators are providing that service. Would uh, distributed generation have to assume that responsibility? Uh, for example, sanctions from regulatory commission. Um, and I, let me forward that question to you so that you can also read it for yourselves and might clarify. Okay, I can answer as far as I know. Uh, the uh, generators providing services during islanded operation uh, will have no responsibility because we are in demo condition. So uh, the, uh, all the responsibility also uh, in our uh, pr uh, proof of concept, in our, in our uh, testing in the demo, are in charge of the uh, distribution system operator. That's why we are in a pilot project, in a demo project. In the future, uh, for sure, things could be different if uh, we will have this uh, as a usual way to operate the network for sure. They all, everyone should have to assume their own responsibilities with respect to the, uh, their involvement. For sure, I think that it could be one of the uh, evolution in this uh, ancillary services market. Great, thank you, Lilia. Um, and now I was just hoping, um, Remy, I remember from the previous webinar you had some, some links to the website and um, some contact information. Uh, Heather, if you could pass the capabilities back to Remy so that he could display those. Uh, would that be okay, Remy? Yes, thank you. So if you want to stay in touch with the Grid for You project, you can subscribe to the grid for you newsletter and you can also uh, download the previous one. For that you have to connect and to visit the gridforyou.eu website. You can also follow us on Twitter and you can join us on the or a LinkedIn uh, group. You have all the detail on the on the screen. And as mentioned previously, if you visit the gridforyou.eu website, you will be able to download the 21 public deliverables we have posted so far. So feel free to follow us and to uh, visit the website to have some uh, interesting uh, information about how the project and the demos are, are doing. Thank you. Great, and thank you again to the panelists. I do, um, I just want to note, we did receive another question, but I'm going to forward that along through email since we are running out of time. Um, and panelists, uh, just feel free to get back to that attendee uh, if you can. Um, and now I'd just like to ask the attendees to please uh, help us evaluate and improve our webinars by completing a very brief survey. We just have three questions for you. Um, and Heather, uh, go ahead and display that first question. And you can provide your responses through the GoToWebinar window. And that first question is, the webinar content provided me with useful information and insight. Great. And the next question, please. The webinar's presenters were effective. And the last question is, overall, the webinar met my expectations. Great. Thank you very much for participating in the survey. And thank you again to the panelists. Um, we appreciate you taking the time to put on this webinar. Um, and uh, thank you for the attendees for participating in today's webinar for the great questions that uh, you had.
So I do invite everyone, our attendees, uh, to check the Solution Center website over the next day or two um, or the next few weeks as we leave it up there. Uh, if you would like to view the slides from today's webinar, and also we will post a recording of today's presentations um, to the training page. So uh, additionally, on there you can find any information on upcoming webinars that may be of interest. We do have others of similar topics and other training events. And we also invite you to inform your colleagues and those in your networks about the Solution Center resources and services, including that no-cost policy support. And with that, I hope everyone has a great rest of your day, and we hope to see you again at future Clean Energy Solution Center events. And this concludes our webinar. Thank you.